So, do you want to learn how to ride a motorcycle? Well, if you do, depending on where you live, you're probably going to have to start with the knowledge exam, followed by a road test. If you live in British Columbia, Canada, there's another step. After the knowledge exam, you'll have to do a skills test in a parking lot in front of an examiner before you're allowed to do your final road test. With that being said, motorcycling can definitely be dangerous. In the United States, you're 35 times more likely to die in a motorcycle than in a car when the data is statistically corrected. Unlike your car, motorcycles are much lighter, and if you have the misfortune of getting hit by a car while on a bike, you might get sent to the shadow realm. Also, not wearing proper safety gear while riding can also lead to a GG experience. Despite these risks though, countless people gear up every year to hit the road on two wheels. Motorcycling can be done safely, but it's probably best to take a course and learn from a professional instructor. I know it can be tempting to do it on the cheap and learn from a friend, given that some motorcycle courses can cost upward of $1,000. Yet there is no replacement for a solid foundation in a sport that's 35 times more dangerous than driving your car. In my case, I took the beginner's motorcycling course with First Gear Motorcycle School, which has locations all over the Vancouver area. The price for this course is $799 before tax. It includes a full day of classroom instruction, followed by two days of parking lot training. The MST exam will also be administered during the course as well, which will allow you to ride on your own without supervision. You also get two complimentary two-hour road rides as well, where instructors take you around town and help you get ready for the final road test. In this video, I will go over my experience taking the course and learning how to ride a motorcycle for the first time. I'll go over what I found challenging and hopefully provide some tips to brand new riders like yourself who are hoping to get into the sport. So without further ado, let's get started. Day one is all classroom. In this part of the course, you'll learn about the theoretical aspects of motorcycle riding. For example, motorcycle apparel is covered as well as lane positioning and how to use the throttle and the brakes. The goal is to get people used to the basics of using a motorcycle and the classroom component also covered the process of insuring your bike and how to ride safely when on the road. If you've never ridden a motorcycle before, this is definitely going to be your first foray into the sport. The instructors at First Gear know that most people who take the course have never sat on a motorcycle before. Day 1 starts slower. The focus is definitely learning how to get the bike moving slowly, but in control. A lot of time was spent on focusing on fine clutch control. One thing that the instructor stressed was that when you're going slow, ironically, the throttle is arguably not as important as one would be led to believe. In fact, mastering the clutch can allow you to crawl slowly, which is a super important skill if you ride a lot in traffic. The only throttle you'll need is the maintenance throttle, which is the minimal amount of throttle needed to prevent stalling. We also covered upshifting and downshifting the gears as well as emergency braking. When you need to stop quickly, you'll have to pull the front brake, clutch, as well as depress the rear brake and downshift your gears all at the same time. It definitely felt like a bit of an overload having to do four things at once, but it got easier with practice. The instructors also stress not to jam on the rear brakes too hard as that could lead to the back brake locking up and inadvertently causing you to slide the rear wheel. Overall, the first day was pretty straightforward. I found that just being on the bike was just as important as the technical skills we learned. It can definitely take a while to get used to something as simple as understanding the balance and feel of your bike. I will admit, it does feel strange balancing what is essentially a 400 pound weight between your legs. When the bike is up straight, it's easy to balance, but once the bike tilts too far to one side or the other, it will likely fall over. My advice is to take it slow and listen to the instructors. If they yell something, listen and really focus hard on the next run to perfect the skills that were just taught. I definitely felt that day three trained you on more real life scenarios. For example, the first thing we learned was how to take a right turn off a stop sign. This is definitely a challenging maneuver for a beginner like myself because you have to balance your bike at slow speed and turn around a tight corner. One piece of advice I got was to rely on your clutch. Revving the engine reasonably high is recommended as the moving cylinders actually provide more stability. But at the end of the day, it's a clutch that ultimately controls the power to the rear wheels. To make the course more dynamic, the instructor set up cones in predetermined locations. If 
a cone was set up, it meant that the cone would be a makeshift stop sign and you would need to stop. Conversely, if the cone was down, it meant that you could just ride through it no problem. Some cones were knocked down while others were kept up just to keep us on our toes. We also learned how to perform an emergency swerve, which makes an emergency braking, counter steering, and the advanced use of the clutch after recovering from a swerve. In an emergency, it's actually recommended to put on the throttle and use the clutch simultaneously so as to extricate oneself quickly from a potential accident. Also, don't forget to tap down on the gears when coming to a stop. If you don't, you could find yourself starting in third gear, which is a real problem. Last, we are also taught how to corner with speed and to look through the corners when coming through. The importance of vision was stressed repeatedly, as we were told that you would go where you look. If you look at the cone or the tree in your way, you are going to hit it every time. Look where you want to go and lean the bike in that direction. Also, push the bars in the direction you want to go. It may seem counterintuitive, but if you are travelling over 25 km an hour or 15 miles per hour, it is a must. If you live in British Columbia, the course will administer the Motor Skills Assessment slash Test. While I won't go into infinite detail about what that test entails, it essentially involves two U-turns, a slow speed crawl, followed by getting your bike to 25 km an hour and then stopping within 7 meters or 21 feet. It's not hard, but you will provide a lot of time to practice the skills during the course and all of my classmates passed. Once you pass the MST, just turn your paperwork into your local ICBC location and you'll be able to ride on your own without a supervisor. I definitely learned a lot taking the beginner's motorcycling course with First Gear Motorcycle School. If you live in the Lower Mainland, they have locations in Richmond, Langley as well as Coquitlam. I personally learned a lot from the instructors and while they yelled a lot, it wasn't personal. If an instructor saw you make a mistake, they would let you know right away and they would expect you to fix the issue immediately as well. It could seem like tough love to some, but it's better to learn things right the first time. Overall, I would definitely recommend the course if you're curious about learning how to ride a motorcycle in BC. You will be professionally taught how to ride a motorcycle, whether you have previous experience or not. Now that I've learned the foundations, I can't wait to get back out on the road and begin my journey on two wheels.